Medicine cabinets are places where people face reality. Medicine cabinets, bathrooms in general, showers are places where people usually have some kind of epiphany or hopefully not an epiphany. I really wouldn't want to meet God in a shower. Um, I mean, I wouldn't want him to get wet, but then I wouldn't want him to be naked either. You know what I'm saying? If he is an old man with a white beard, okay, I have enough trouble looking at myself. This body used to be ripped when I was in Korea. Asia, that's where I'm going with this. My parents <laughs> have to get out of their house because my friend of 20 years to my mother, the landlady, needs the house for her son who's coming from Jersey to take care of his sister. So, uh, not that I wanted to stay here forever anyway, but I just managed to get a really decent waitstaff job at a carriage house, which augments my teaching. And the two of these things were going to come together with my Iron Man solid will that allowed me to stay at home at this age, not dating, not socializing very much, and finish my education. Well, that all gets thrown out the window. It seems my life, if ever it ends up in a book, should be called thrown out the window at every turn. And I could have a picture of a guy and his belongings being tossed from a train. Because that's what happens every couple of years, right? I go to Korea, and I had a pretty good run there. I should have gotten myself on the rails to success there. Could have gotten three degrees, could have saved 30 grand, right? But what did I do? I was beholden to loser jobs and, you know, girlfriends who we won't make any comments about. So being dedicated to the wrong things in life, that could be a lesson to learn from this video. Also, that you can have hair like Woody the Woodpecker if you just let it grow and you roll around in bed at night. So my choices now are I get some of my buddies to get an apartment in Manhattan and pay like a jerk to some stupid landlord who thinks it's fair to charge, you know, $2,500 to $3,000 a month for what will amount to something that would fit in the living room here, okay? So that's, that's, that's one option. And then work like a dog and not save to go to Japan, right? The other option is I've been talking to an agent and I could go to China and my friend Paul would be gone with me and we're working things out and the agent is lovely. She's very trustworthy and she's got contacts on the ground, you know, but still it's China. You know, when you do things for ex exotelic reasons, they never really work out unless you're a businessman. Businessmen like doing things for exotelic reasons. The rest of us, we kind of need to have our heart invested in what I'm doing or what they're doing, right? And while I have nothing against the Chinese, and I've, I've heard that they're the coolest people in Asia, um, I don't really want to go to China, right? And that little tidbit there is what causes people to screw things up. They're always doing things they don't want to do, you know. Well, I love her, so I'm going to marry her, even though she wants to live at the North Pole. What could go wrong, right? Um, people say, well, I don't really want to work in a cubicle on Madison Avenue, but hey, look at the money and the swimming pool I can get out of it. What could go wrong? <laughs> hey, baby, lock the door on the way out. Don't let my wife see you. So, you know, I learned a long time ago, it's better to suffer through the boring slow times, like living on Long Island for three years while I get my life sorted out, right? And get fired from Kaplan because they didn't want to pay me health benefits. Get fired from Greenpeace because of things I didn't say. Thank you, PC America. Because at the end, you're going to have worked out things properly during the torture, right? Um, but it hasn't been working out that way. I can hear the rails, I can hear the train slowing down a little bit, and here comes the conductor to toss me out the window again, and that's what my life's been like. Uh, and I don't want this happening anymore. So what would you do? Would you say, don't do it the hard way, just go to China, take the money, teach the kids, and then move on to Japan the next year? Or could that end up in another situation where I'm lying, you know, on the embankment of the railroad tracks and my belongings all over the place. This is what my life feels like. And maybe this is why sometimes I go on rants. But I think I've been holding it together pretty well because of Zen. Thanks. 
Any miracle workers out there in Japan?